Hi, friends. Very good evening. Good to have you here today. We'll just wait for a few minutes for more people to join. Thank you so much for joining on time. I hope you are able to see uh, see me and hear me clearly. It's 4.59, so we'll just wait for another two minutes for some more people to join and then we'll begin. But thank you so much for coming in on time, for registering and for taking time out this evening to be a part of this uh, webinar. Hello, good evening. Hi, Latika. Thanks for turning your video on. It's always good to see faces and that to smiling faces. <laughs> Hello, Jyoti. Nice to have you with us this evening. Hi, I'm sorry I was muted, I think. Ah, okay. Okay, so um, my name is Aditya and while uh, we are waiting for a few more people to join, uh, I'm going to invite us to do a small little fun and mindful kind of activity. Is that okay? Can we do a quick little three minute activity? Uh, but it's going to require uh, as many of us who can to keep our video on and unmute for a moment. So this is our time to unmute and make as much noise as possible. No, 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 not. I'm just kidding. But yes, please unmute. Please keep your video on. And what we're going to do is we're going to play a little game. Okay. Which is a game of counting from one to 20. Okay, which so so simple. We just have to count from one to twenty. All right. Now here's the thing that anyone, we are about fourteen people in the room right now. Any one of us can can say a number. So let's say if I say one, anyone else can say two. So who'd like to say two? Two. Two. Beautiful. So now the moment somebody says two, someone else can say three. Three. What? Ah, lovely. Four. Five. Six. 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 Okay. So there we had two people say six. Right? So the moment you have two people say a number or two people say it together, then we begin again from one. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's why it's helpful to keep the video on and just keep yourself unmuted. And you have to be a little mindful to see like, you know, who might be going next. So if there's absolute silence, just slip in your next number. Right? It's a lot of fun. Um, shall we try? All right, so I'll begin. It's the easiest to begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, one, two, three, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, seven. Ah, okay. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, five, oh. Okay, one. So for those who have just joined, we are counting from one to 20. 
and uh, anyone everyone can keep your video on and unmute and anyone can put in a number but the moment two people or more say the num same number then we begin from one again so the goal is to be able to reach from 1 to 20 without any confusion okay 1 2 3 4 5 5 1 Two, three. Same. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Let's have some more people open their videos and participate. Can a person six. repeat? No, you can't repeat the same number. So now I just said six. Another number. Like if I have spoken, I've said five after 15, not 13. Can I repeat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can repeat again. No problem. Okay. Okay. So let's go again from the beginning. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. <laughs> it's not that easy, no? Okay, let's give it one more try. Come on, everyone. Put your video on and uh, look into the camera and smile. It becomes easier. Let's try it. Come on, we can make it happen. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. 19. 20. Woohoo! Let's give ourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. So that's just a nice, cute, little, fun, mindfulness game that uh, I often like to play with the group. But I have to say, this is the first time we did it online and it worked out really well. So um, thank you very much for coming and taking our time this evening uh, for this webinar. My name is Aditya Junjunwala. I'm a part of Let's Enterprise. Um, I've been working with uh, young people in experiential program for the last 10 years. And last five years, we have been running a program in Pune called the Enterprise India Fellowship. And the objective of uh, this evening's uh, webinars was to share what we are doing, uh, to share some of our thoughts uh, with regard to learning experientially to share some of our program components. And uh, since uh, this is a, a group of, I think, mostly educators, so um, probably uh, it'll be wonderful to have a little interactive time uh, towards the end of the session and hear from all of us and and it, it's uh, and see if we can exchange some ideas, some best practices, some thoughts. Uh, that's what the objective is. So let me just very quickly jump in and just share a few introduction slides. And then I'm going to open up a Jamboard and ask all of us as, as educators, as parents, as students uh, to share some thoughts. So um, our, our thought process in terms of vision and mission at Let's Enterprise is very simple. And if we ask, we asked ourselves this question that, you know, in the long future, 100 years from now, once all the work that we're trying to do is done, and how would the world, how would we like to see the world? Uh, and we said that uh, we want to see a world where we can all reach our, our abundance, right? Financial and emotional and any other form of abundance driven by, by following our passion and purpose, by following what comes to us. Sometimes these words, passion and purpose become a little heavy, but just by following what comes to me, what, what I enjoy and what gives me naturally, what, what, uh, what, what gives me energy. And the mission that we, we, in terms of the work that we want to do right now towards that that reality is cultivating an entrepreneurial mindset through limitless learning 
and both these words are important to us entrepreneurial mindset is a mindset that that's not limited by what i know or what i have and limitless learning is learning that is not limited by any one single mode or form and i think as educators this is something that all of us uh, aim for and experiment and innovate and do in our own way in so many different ways um so our programs uh, try we attempt to bring in these three uh, pieces education of course in terms of concepts knowledge tools uh, academics experience in terms of doing application and uh, you know failing and succeeding and the most important piece um, i feel that ties it all together is awareness a process of reflection a process of coaching and process of you know going back and seeing what did i learn what did i like what did i not like and i think this is what we found in the last 5 years has really kind of given our participants a huge huge edge and i hope to share a little bit about what some little tools and innovation that we've been able to experiment with so uh, the program that we've run in the last 5 years is called the enterprise india fellowship it is a it has been uh, a hybrid program which means uh, it's worked online and offline we've worked with students in in multiple cities we've had 74 participants in our program um, and these are people who have been uh, uh from the age of 18 up to 24 25 so it's been a diverse group from diverse backgrounds and from uh, about a dozen cities across the country uh the 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 core focus and emphasis of our program has been working on projects so we uh, have uh, three or four different types of projects that that the program participants uh participate in uh, there are weekly workshops so we take you know topics from from business from economics from arts from communication and we run them as workshops and there is one to one coaching that happens as a part of the program um we measure only one thing uh that is quantity of work done we we don't have any qualitative measure so we we measure quantity of work done and this is something i'd like to share a little bit more as we go forward so we measure number of hours that participants have worked on on either projects or learning or uh, any kind of work that they've done there's an app and they document that and we measure the number of hours done of course we have measure in terms of impact and self assessment of impact but uh, yeah we measure quantity of hours um we we've, we've been fortunate and blessed to receive a little bit of recognition in the last couple of years in terms of experiential education in terms of consulting because a lot of the experiential comes when students participate with industry and with organizations and with individuals in apprenticeships or in projects to kind of support them in various ways so um that's a quick introduction i wanted to share and now i'm going to request my colleague uh, daria to share a jamboard link with all of us um darya can you share the link so if you yes. see the zoom chat darya will be sharing a google jamboard link sure. and i'd invite all of us uh, and darya if you can share your screen if uh, all of us who are on a laptop if you can open this jamboard link and it's just a blank canvas and as as educators as parents i would love to um invite you to just click on the little sticky note icon on the left and open up a sticky note and just write down what's a problem that you would like to solve for in education as an educator as a parent as a student what what's a problem that you would really like to solve for or maybe you have been already working on and solving for as a so Yeah so you can just click on the link in the chat box and open up the jamboard and let's 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 see let's put all our thoughts together because i think together in this room we've got many many decades of of education experience uh and it will it will be beautiful to see the kind of thoughts that that arise from this 
wonderful group in terms of what is the problem that you'd like to see solved or that you'd like to work towards solving or that you have been working towards solving in education. So I see one note that's gone up, that's to have a strong value orientation. Okay, let's, let's see some more thoughts coming in. Relevance to real life application. Wonderful. What is it that that you feel we should be solving for as educators in our efforts to redefine, refine, uh, make education more useful, more practical, more meaningful. But yeah, you can just organize the notes as they're coming in. Yeah. So looking at the child as a whole being beyond marks, beautiful, learning that is relevant and of holistic benefit to the learner experiential learning <clears throat> making learning fun without the fear of exams beautiful relevance to real life application let's take another 2 minutes and let's let's get some more thoughts in come on friends i'm sure we have a lot of ideas a lot of experience a lot of experiments that we've done It'll be beautiful to see some of these chits flowing here, learning that helps to find one's purpose, empower young adults as to how to help themselves with respect to self well being and how to resolve issues. Who can be the go to to address these? Get more self aware. There's a huge, beautiful emphasis on self aware. Let's take another minute and see if we get some more thoughts in here. Responsible human being. Learning that is authentic to the learner. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, in, um, in the, in, in, Almost every conversation that I've had with parents, um, I, I end up asking them, you know, at some point, what is it that you really want for your child? You know, and, and especially parents who are sometimes a little anxious or sometimes worried or. And this question kind of throws them off because they're not used to being asked that question. And but the most common answer, and I would say like 80, 90% of the time I've received only two answers, two points to this answer. One is, you know, my child should be able to stand up on their own feet, feet in the world and take care of themselves, live life the way they want to. And two, they should be happy. These are the only two things that most parents are not able to come up with the third. And it's so beautiful. I mean, this is really what we all want at the end of the day. So I see... All of these thoughts that we are sharing are so much in alignment. Don't judge themselves by marks. Parents should be aware of their child's potential. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing these thoughts. And we'll share a screenshot of this on an email to all of us uh, in the next day or two. So it, it'll be there for you if you would like to have a look at. That, yeah, you can stop your screen share and I'll, I'll share my screen once again. So, um, is my screen visible now? Yes. All right. <clears throat> so what we did, uh, friends, a couple of years back when we began this work is to go out and talk to, um, parents, educators, and to people in the industry, uh, and, and try and understand what is the problem that we're trying to solve. And, uh, I'd love to hear, you know, your thoughts on this. So if you look at this diagram, look at the slide, there are three parts to it. Right on top is consequences. These are the symptoms that we feel that we see in society when we look around. Problems are what we think 
you know, are the core problems and at the bottom are the root causes. So I'll just read out some of the consequences. So consequences that we see around is burnout in the late 20s, frustration, discontentment, uh, people ending up choosing only safe and known career options because we are making choices based on others' thoughts, people feeling lost, losing energy that is actually required to create excellence. Uh, when we talk to industry, they speak about a severe talent shortage, uh, especially in the small and medium sector, which makes up like a huge part of the economy. And many young people end up not developing their own vision or their own sense of purpose and end up don't, not seeing themselves as nation builders. Right? So these are some of the consequences that, that we feel we see in the society. And when we try to articulate you know, what the core problem is, we came up with these two statements. One is uh, lack of self-awareness and that reflects in so many of the chits that, that my friends here in, in this call have shared. Lack of self-awareness and life slash work skills. And the other one was a lack of a sense of agency and commitment to take the initiative to solve some real problems. These are two problems that we identified. And if you look at it below what the root cause of these problems, we identified a bunch of statements through our conversations and interviews with people. Uh, so I'll read them out for you once again. Risk averse societal culture, especially parents, families leading to a scarcity mindset. Therefore, we are all gunning for the same few options. Like many of the chits that came up, academics gains priority over every other form of learning and that creates a huge skew. Students time and energy not fully utilized and harnessed during their, their peak years. And I think as educators, I'm sure many of us will kind of, you know, will feel that there's a lot more energy that, that young people have lack of exposure and knowledge of different career paths, performance measuring system measures only academic performance. Young people don't learn to take their own decisions early enough. And there's a gap between academic curriculum and industry realities. These are some of the root causes that we identified. So I'll, I'll take a moment here. And in case anybody would like to unmute and share a thought, we can take a couple of moments here because I think this is the single most important slide or point that I have to share. And I feel this is what probably brings us all together here this evening. Do you feel, uh, would love to hear from anyone on this call. Do you, do you feel, have you felt any of these uh, parts? Is, is this in, in line with what troubles you as an educator or parent? Uh, it is very much so. I mean, it is very precise what you've almost nailed it. What happens for children around this age? Right. Right. And later also when we work, we realize the gaps that we were never prepared for this. Right. Uh, when we go to work, we realize that we have to be really prepared for a lot of teamwork. And uh, while in school, we were too busy studying our own curriculums and giving our own tests. Absolutely, ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, just one thing. One of the indirect root causes is I'm not able to hear you, Sushil, clearly. Yeah, sorry, my mic has a problem. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, it's better. Yeah. So, what I was saying is that I think one of the indirect root causes is the screen time. Uh, screen time. Action. I think sure. that does lead to, you know, some of the kind of lack of energy. Absolutely. Uh, ability to make decisions because a lot of youngsters are engaged in not just youngsters, I think but a lot of people now um I know are hooked on to screens and it's kind of a way to uh, it's an easy distraction. Absolutely. Thank absolutely. Thank absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that Sushil. So um so this was our attempt to kind of frame the problem because we said that you look as a single organization, we can we can put in our little drop in the ocean. 
but as a pool as as educators as as institutions we can we can really make an impact and and this is our little uh, attempt to frame the problem and try to build some some uh, build some processes some innovations and and i i'm really uh, i'm feeling fantastic that today we are connecting with with all of you who are educators and we want to really open up and and create create this platform to collaborate and to synergize and to see how you know what we can do together to to build some of these bridges and to solve this problem at large so uh, all right let me just move ahead so a couple of things which i wanted to kind of elaborate on in terms of uh, the problem that we we really want to solve one is the problem of motivation right and i've just illustrated it through these two charts here you know uh, on the top right of the graph you imagine is your exams on the left is the first day you went to school or college and your big goal is to complete your exams and the left side graph is how we assume you know a, a student assumes that i'm going to now work i have 100 days or i have 3 months or whatever and i'm going to work consistently and i'm going to get uh, you know reach that goal right but the right graph is actually what happens and and that's the reality of of a lot of school and college education it's all last minute right and i've done engineering and i know how last minute last minute can get but that, that's just the way it is the point is how do we solve this problem i if you do we have an answer i don't know if we have a foolproof answer but uh, i'm sharing here a couple of graphs of a few students um and like i said you know we we measure quantity of work done not quality so one of the the philosophy that we've been following is quantity over quality because if there is enough quantity quality will start emerging but quality is difficult to be born without enough quality right? enough quantity right so we've been just measuring uh number of hours that they put in on projects that they are passionate about things that they do and then you know we find that it's it's of course you see spikes and ups and downs but it's it's not like last minute dead end work towards one thing right and i'm not saying that that is the solution i'm just saying that this is one of the big problems that we all want to solve of student motivation how do you keep how do you keep us motivated throughout the year how do we you know keep having challenges and successes and celebrations that keep moving and one of the thoughts is you know Uh, so we have this concept of a body of work um, and a couple of years back i presented a ted talk on the concept of body of work and the idea is that when i document my own progress in terms of number of hours in terms of body of work and number of pieces of you know articles written and when i can see that as a simple graph i and i see my graph you know rising falling it creates a sense of intrinsic motivation it creates a sense of progress right so this is one thought which i wanted to share and this is a simple uh, uh, self assessment of competencies that we've seen in our students as they enter our program and complete our program and it's purely based on this concept of body of work just on them doing projects presenting going out and meeting people and you can see the blue graphs showing a substantial increase in the way they assess themselves uh, just by doing quantity over quality just doing 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 and the confidence starts building up the other question is you know uh, very big question of you know what am i good at and what should i do what skill should i develop um and every young person in fact every person has you know has this question that what should i really be doing and it's very difficult to answer this question right in the beginning so uh, one of the approaches that you know we take is to divide every career and every job possible into two buckets in the broadest way and i would say on one side is a is a bucket of capability based careers and one side is qualification based careers now i know that there is there is going to be an overlap so obviously qualification based also requires capability and capability also requires qualification but the point is that there are some careers and some jobs in this world that require a certain linear progression that require certain certifications and qualifications if you are going to be a brain surgeon and operate on my head i'm not going to let you do it if you are self learned as simple as that but then there are enough careers and and opportunities in this world that are more about what you can do what you can learn and how you grow 
right? And I f- we find that, you know, helping them break it down into these two boxes uh, reduces a little bit of complexity from their thinking. Uh, the other piece is this whole industry and academia divide, which is uh, that when we speak to people in the industry, they say log nahi milte. And when we speak to youngsters, they say, good, you don't get good jobs easily. So there is a huge gap. There's a huge gap, right? And we all know that. And so one of the, one of the concepts, once again, that we, we share and, and we believe in and is, is this concept of, um, okay, so I use it like a metaphor. And the idea is that, look, if you're going to have an ice cream shop, right? And you want to have all these beautiful flavors of ice cream, uh, What's the first flavor that you're going to need to manufacture? Any thoughts? Any vanilla? Thoughts? Vanilla? Right. Vanilla? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and why vanilla? That's the basic one with the absolute. I mean, you can manipulate the taste with that. Exactly. Exactly. At the end of the day, what is strawberry ice cream? It's 80% of vanilla and 20% of some kind of strawberry pulp. What is chocolate mint ice cream? It's 80% vanilla and a little bit of chocolate and mint, right? The, the base of every flavor is vanilla. Therefore, I better make great vanilla ice cream. And then all the flavors are much easier, right? And we apply the same thing to skills because it's so difficult to decide exactly what I need to do in my life. And if I can develop the vanilla skills, right? The, the basic, the core foundational skills, if we can strengthen them, and help uh, youngsters. It's not necessary to decide at the age of 18 or 19 what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. But if we can focus on building uh, your skills, attitudes, and knowledge, right? And now this is a triangle that I think most of us as educators are familiar with. Uh, the, the problem is that most of the time we end up focusing only on the bottom uh, uh, side of this triangle, the knowledge side. The skills and the attitudes don't get as much attention as the knowledge, right? So this introducing this concept of vanilla skills is once again, something that we found that is very, very empowering for youngsters and their families. It reduces the pressure to take decisions right away. Okay, so this one I already shared. Uh, just a slide of a uh, few people who have been my mentors and guides uh, from the academic world and who have uh, very graciously agreed to be our mentors and strategic advisors in, in our program that we are launching now, uh, which is the undergraduate program. And I'll share about that program as we go forward. So um, I'm just going to take a, another slide or two to share what the concept that we are launching. And then I'd like to just open up and share some of our program components and how we run them. And we will just keep that open to any questions, any thoughts, anything that you would like to share and, and we can bring this evening to a wrap with that. So what we are trying to do, friends, is uh, launching a new category of, of higher education, if I may say so. And we want to call it the working degree, which means the left triangle is how a typical bachelor's education would look like today, at least in, in, a, in a business uh, degree or in an arts or a science degree, even an engineering degree which is 70 to 80% classroom work and some amount of experiential, right? And what we want to do is obviously flip it. So the experiential part is much larger, but not at the expense of your academic learning. So the whole triangle expands. Now you will say, where does that extra time come from? Right? The truth is that uh, most bachelor's programs, you don't spend more than three hours of classroom time in a day maximum four hours. If you talk to an average bachelor student, they don't spend more than three to four hours of actual classroom learning in the day. What do they do the rest of the time? They have a great time, which is fantastic. Now, the question is, can we use that rest of the time to work on projects, to work on challenges, to work experientially, have a great time and have that experiential learning? So we expand the size of the pie. And the idea is that by the time a young person completes their three years of graduation, can they walk out with 
one and a half to two years of work experience? Can they walk out having experienced three or four different industries? Can they walk out having explored multiple domains and having a better sense of who am I? What comes to me naturally? What do I want to do? Which skills do I want to develop? Right? And our experience in the last five years with the Enterprise India Fellowship is a clear and resounding yes. And which is why we are putting this, this three-year working degree concept together. So the program that we are launching this year is called the Undergraduate Program in Multidisciplinary Entrepreneurial Development. And when we say entrepreneurial development, it does not mean that you're going to be an entrepreneur necessarily. What it means is you're going to develop and sharpen your entrepreneurial mindset. And entrepreneurial mindset in our definition is very simple. It's a mindset that says, I don't know, but I will learn. Just point me in the direction. I don't have, but tell me what to do and I will get it. It's a mindset that says, here are the problems. Here are the resources I need. I'm willing to break my comfort zones and go out and solve these problems, right? It's as simple as that. Uh, and I believe that today in our world, whether we're going to be a teacher or we're going to be a uh, um, an administrator, we are going to be a business person, we are going to be a musician or a sports person, we must have an entrepreneurial mindset, a problem-solving mindset, a resource-acquiring uh, mindset, an asset-building mindset, and, and that's what the whole thing is about. So a few key thoughts around it is, you know, in terms of being aligned with, N with the NEP, in terms of multidisciplinary, in terms of focused on self-awareness, um, we are going to have, uh, have affiliated with uh, a Pune institution uh, for the BBA program and a degree from SPPU. A very, very important element of what we're trying to do is mentored apprenticeships, which is apprenticeships with companies which we've tied up and I'll share that and they are mentored apprenticeships. So the uh, organization where you, the students will do an apprenticeship will give a problem statement and we will have a three month plan of how the students are going to solve that problem statement. And we do weekly check-ins and, and guide the students through. So it's not that we just send them for an apprenticeship and come back. There's a template that we would follow and the students can follow that step-by-step. Step. Uh, so in the second year, three apprenticeships. In the third year, one long apprenticeship. First year is a skill up here. And throughout the three years, there is a career coaching that happens periodically that helps them reflect on their journey and their learnings. And a couple of components which I want to share this evening, Green Room, Regen, Story Cells, and Net, and Conflection that have worked beautifully for us and something that we are very happy to open up and share uh, absolutely openly with anybody who would like to experiment with it or adapt it for their own school or program. Uh, I'm going to skip some of these things because it will take too much time. Uh, these are some of the organizations that we have tied up MOUs with for students to do uh, apprenticeships and projects during the working degree program. We have about 40 plus partners so far. And in the last three years, we've, we've done 43 such industry projects. And we find uh, this is something which I want to share that companies are more than open to come up and share problem statements uh, for students to work on. The only challenge that companies face is one, students coming in without basic vanilla skill sets, and then it becomes too painful to manage them. And two is uh, they need a little support in terms of scoping the project and in terms of doing some check-ins and supporting the students along the way. Otherwise, it becomes too time-consuming for them to teach the students along the way, right? So companies are very willing. Students are very willing. It's up to us as education partners to come in and build this platform so that students can more effectively engage with organizations. Okay, so... Uh, this is the most the, the 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 part that we really want to share with all of you this evening and these are some of the learning processes or program components that we have we have developed in the last 5 years and this will be these will be the core learning processes for the new working degree the ug med program that we are launching and i'll just speak about a few of them and then i shall open up the floor for any thoughts and discussion so um, the ones that i want to speak about one is the 
uh, apprenticeship and pr apprenticeship projects, company projects. So here, this slide is just a is a case study of a project or, that three of our students did for an organization called Maratha Chambers of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture in Pune, a well-known industry chamber. And they wanted to create a recruitment campaign to recruit youngsters in their organization, right? So we had three of our students who worked with MCCI and went and interviewed some of their uh, some of their team members, went and interviewed students in the city and tried to understand what are the perceptions that students have about MCCI, what are the qualities and skills that MCCI is looking for, did a comp did a benchmark of other organizations that recruit students, and then came up with an action plan and a recruitment campaign for MCCI. Now, this was a three-month project, right? A project which was actually implemented and used by the company. So, you know, what happens here is that the student is not doing a theoretical project. It's not just a project to submit to their teacher. There's a client, they have a real problem that they want to solve. There's a process that the student is given to solve that problem. And the student is doing some steps that typically an organization would not do. An organization would not go out and conduct interviews, go out and do a competitive research. So they are providing value and fresh perspectives to the organization. Now, what happens is there is a huge exponential growth in their confidence, a huge growth in their perspective, in their exposure and the way they think. Just the fact that, oh, I can go and speak to somebody with 20 years of experience and I can ask them five questions and they're going to take time to answer is, is an amazing leap in confidence, right? Uh, they experience... You know, the whole thing of setting up interviews, asking questions, processing information, making presentations, and then actually going out and implementing the campaign, right? So this is just one case study I wanted to share, but the component is these mentored apprenticeships. It, it has taken us a lot of energy running these apprenticeships, and we've gone through various cycles of huge amount of energy and mentoring, but we've been able to now come down to a few templated projects about a dozen or so templated projects where now we know that here are a dozen steps and you need to follow these steps. And at each step, there are some learning materials, there are some concepts you need to learn. And pretty much the student is able to follow it through with weekly checkpoints from our side, right? So it, they feel extremely motivated. And of course, there are some points where they hit rock bottom. and But that's beautiful because once they hit that rock bottom and suddenly they have a new aha moment and they come back, amazing learning happens. So that is one that I wanted to share. The other one that I wanted to share in terms of a, a learning component is what we call as regen networking and regen stands for regeneration. So we, we hold these events a couple of times a year where we call people from the industry, uh, professionals from the industry, and we get a group of our students, we train them uh, over a two week period to network. And, you know, when you say network, it's a, it can have many connotations, but we just train them to introduce themselves, tell their story. That's a really, really important piece, telling my story uh, and having an ask. Because if you don't have an ask, then there's no networking. You know, if I sh just shake hands and come back, uh, I don't think it's networking. It's networking when I say that, you know, hey, I'm looking for someone who can guide me with this data analytics project. When, when I place an ask out there, it's a hook, right? So we, 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 it's a little difficult for them to have these asks, but so we have a long a three hour evening and then you have these students that mingle with these people. They go out, they introduce themselves. So in one evening, a student would meet 20, 22, 23 professionals, introduce themselves, listen to the other person's story and put out an ask. The ask could be for mentorship. The ask could be for a project. The ask could be for a job, right? And whether something comes out of it or not, one thing that comes out is a huge amount of confidence. And it's very interesting and amazing as a young person to speak to someone who is much older than you, much more experienced than you, who you don't know as a family member or as a school member and, and ask them about their life, ask them about their interesting, about what's happening. And it, it, it just transforms them. So this was one component that, you know, that's working brilliantly for us. And I wanted to share it with, with the, with all of us. 
the third one that I want to share this evening is something that we call conflection. So conflection is a process, is a monthly process of reflective writing. Uh, and we've got about 150 plus conflections written and they're all up on our uh, on our blog i am going to request my colleague rhythm if she can share uh, the link on the chat group to our blog which are conflections written by young people and you'll be amazed it's like chicken soup for the teenage soul right i mean they get a space to speak about things that they don't usually get to speak about even with their friends we may think that they are very comfortable with their friends and can speak about everything but that's not true uh, and they get a space we uh, it takes a little bit of facilitation to allow them to open up but they get a space in written to communicate about things that they would not even do easily with friends uh, and it's very very liberating um, and they get to connect the dots between their life across time zones and in the recent one month Right, and a huge amount of learning and reflection happens here. Um, apart from that, I think another thing that happens here is learning to write and express. I, I feel that the, the title CEO should be changed to Chief Editing Officer. Written communication is so important in today's world, whether it is writing a piece of instruction, writing a mail, a WhatsApp message, writing sales copy, writing something for Google, uh, and today in chat GPT, writing a prompt for chat GPT, written communication is really, really crucial. So this is one, one of our components that is now well documented, well structured, working well, and very happy to share and, and work with anyone who would like to, you know, experiment with inflection and run it in the, in their own environment. Uh, the, of the last two, which I'm going to share tonight, uh, the one is what we call as story cells. And we believe it's true. Stories sell. And, and we are, we are uh, selling every time, all the time. I mean, we had to sell a concept to all of us to be here, take our time and be here tonight and stay until this 45th moment. So we are constantly getting uh, other people's attention. And the most powerful thing that we can sell is our story. And we uh, combine this concept of body of work, this concept of exploring and help youngsters to start, you know, before you can connect the dots, we need to have enough dots, right? So the, we, um, the story self process helps them to, you know, capture so many dots of experiences they've had, whether it was a trip, whether it was a project, whether it was something written, whether it was a book they read, whether it was a series of conversations they had, it helps them to capture those dots, right? And then it helps them to start making sense of those dots and start putting those dots together as a, so, as a story. Now, I believe that at the end of a, a three-year, you know, graduate program or postgraduate program, if I can tell my story in one minute, and I can speak in a minute or so about what I'm about. That's more powerful than anything else. And I think intuitively all of us know that. If, if I can share my story briefly and authentically, that makes me a magnet unto others and to opportunities. But it also makes me, it, it makes me into my own sense of, it makes me into my own Radar, it gives me my own sense of direction. I'm able to make sense out of my own story and new experiences I'm having in my life. Obviously, it's not as perfect as that, but making the effort of putting a story together and then taking it to my LinkedIn profile, taking it to my resume, making a video introduction out of it, learning how to make like a 30, a one minute introduction out of it. It all flows from that or making an SOP to apply for a college abroad, but it all flows from being able to connect the dots and, and know my own story. Right. So this is a two week long process that we built. Once again, this is a process that we have now documented and we are happy to share it. If somebody would like to adopt it, if uh, we are very happy to, you know, kind of speak about these things and, uh, and uh, happy to see it kind of propagate itself. Right. So I think uh, that's all from my side. I think I said there are two more, but this is the last one that I had. 
um, with that, I will stop my screen share and um, it's been 48 minutes. I'm going to, um, before I invite everybody to kind of share your thoughts, I'm going to do a small little energizer activity once again. I love doing these little ones. So what that means is you have to put your hand up and show it on the screen, which obviously means you have to put your video on. So can I request you just for a, a moment, as long as you're clothed and looking appropriate, please put on your video and you can put your hand up there. So let's have all our hands showing on the screen as many as possible. Yeah. And you're allowed to smile and then you can just wave your fingers a little bit. So let's have a beautiful waving screen. It, it really looks good on the screen when all the fingers are waving and it's an excuse to help me get everyone to open their videos. Basically, that's the little mind trick here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. You can put your hands down and I'd love to hear any thoughts, any questions, uh, any suggestions, any ideas. Would love to open up the platform and would love to hear your experiences. Uh, I just one question. Uh, what is the entry criteria for this course? For the undergraduate program? Yeah. So the uh, uh, we have a five-step application process, which I can share. Uh, the entry criteria for someone who's looking for a degree along with the program is having completed and passed the 12th standard. But we have our own five-step application process. And what we are looking for is uh, people who are uh, a hunger to do and a readiness to go out and work. So we are looking for uh, basic the four R abilities, reading, writing, arithmetic, uh, critical thinking. And we want to see whether you are and your family is really ready to go out and and, and work and do a working because normally at the age of 19, we are not used to working. So I'm sorry if I was not very clear, but I'm sh I'll share our program prospectus and the five-step application process is, is mentioned clearly there. Thank you. Thanks, Sushil. Adi, what about children who have completed their 10th grade and they wish to explore and also give get hands-on and get trained on these, that triangle that you showed was very valuable capacities, skills, attitudes, is there a scope for them? So currently the program is designed for students after the 12th, but if there is a student who is uh, finished their 10th and is looking at doing something like this all out, as in doing this full time, then we can certainly speak about it. All right, thank you. I was going to ask the very same question. <laughs> okay. So the way it's designed, the first six months of the program actually can work for anybody, right? So even for a, a student going into the 11th, but only it's, it's not something that they would, we would look at them doing along with too many other things right now. It, it is a little intense. Would it make sense to have a kind of a gap year? I mean, if the student wants to do yes. it. Yes. So if somebody is taking a gap year, the first year of our program is actually designed to be like, it can operate like a standalone gap year. Because the year two and year three is really about apprenticeships. So the year one can also be, uh, can be done as a standalone year. That's the way we've designed it. And then maybe it can also help them to identify where to gravitate for the 11th and 12th, because there's often a confusion. That it will definitely do because it will give them an opportunity to explore multiple things and go out and meet many different types of people. So one of the processes actually that I did not share, I didn't have a slide for it. One of the components, and once again, I'm happy to collaborate with anybody to set up this component called Green Room, uh, which we kind of uh, learned from Professor David Gold at the University of Iowa, which is where we bring on, um, every month we bring on somebody from the industry who comes and engages with the students, but it's not just them speaking and the students listening. It's an evening of story sharing where they, they pose a question and then everybody discusses around that question. Then we have a deeper conversation in terms of different professions. And that's one of the things that helps youngsters understand what's behind the glamour in any profession. Because the truth is that there's every work, every career has a dark underbelly 
and it's it's very important for them to understand uh, uh, the glamour as well as what's behind that profession, which gives them a much more complete picture. Adi, what is the what would be the cost of this kind of a program? So the three-year undergraduate program that we are uh, launching this year, that we have launched this year, is uh, priced at nine and a half lakhs for all three years. Okay, and suppose somebody wants to do only the first year. So we can speak about that offline. We've designed it, but we can we'd like to speak and understand what is their situation and what they're looking at. And all these programs are in English medium, right? So it's uh, is it available to somebody who is speaking a different language, who is comfortable in another? That's a language? great question. That's a great question. So it is primarily designed in English. So it's necessary that they should be able to read and write. But if they are not fluent in English, that's not a problem to me. As long as they can read and write, because some material will be in that. But I've seen that not being good in spoken English is not a problem. Because okay. that 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 gets picked up fast. Thank you, Adi. Thank you so much. So we'd love to connect and we'd love to collaborate with, with, with you guys. We'd love, I'd love to meet one-to-one -one and explore what we could do. We'd love to, you know, I'd love to hear from you about your experiences in education and see how we can build some of these things further together. Uh, so please do connect. I will also send out uh, a message. I'm requesting my colleague Rhythm to share my LinkedIn uh, connection. Would love to connect on LinkedIn also and my also my contact number. Would love to connect. Um, I'm also sharing uh, a resource that we put together called Deconstructing College. Uh, so there's a link and there's a landing page for that. Uh, which just requires a registration, but it's not, there's no cost. There's a worksheet and a video that we have put together. And what it does is it helps uh, youngsters to deconstruct their college experience into nine layers. You know, normally when you think of a college, you think of the, the university, the subject, the ranking, and what friends think about it. But we try to help them to think about it in terms of, you know, what, what kind of uh, student clubs and organizations are there what's the kind of culture that exists in that university, um, what's the kind of alumni network. So we've given them nine layers that they can use to have a deeper understanding of colleges that they're looking for. And I believe that it really matters. Uh, you know, every college, irrespective of their ranking, has a has a cultural orientation, has, has certain things that is strong at and not so strong at. And at a young age, we don't realize these things. We are very driven by what people are saying. But just recognizing that these layers exist can 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 shift the perspective a little bit. So that's a, a, a beautiful uh, uh, landing page that our team has put together with a video and a worksheet, uh, which is completely free of cost called Deconstructing College, which we also I would like to share with all of us. But uh, I would love to hear from a few more of you guys. Um, what is it that has connected with you today? Uh, and what, what has been your experience in your journey of education? You still have another five or 10 minutes that you can take. Um, I think generally after 11th and 12th or maybe after 10th, uh, it becomes all the more narrowed down to academics in terms of which college to go, which competitive exams to take, which coaching classes to do. So things like self-awareness, well-being, building capacities, all of this kind of take uh, a backseat. A big backseat. And um, then you have something very real to meet later because you need these capacities to even carry forward if you have cracked the best of the exams and gone to best of the institutes. Um, and in, when we don't have that, then that becomes a struggle. It's no more so much joy as it could be. So I think to build that potential powerfully side by side is very, very important, which coaching classes do not offer so even if somebody is doing only that something like this is going to empower we need something more a much more rounded system to take care of other needs absolutely thank you so much i mean you said it's spot on and i find that you know uh, 
for maybe 10 or 20 percent of the students following that 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 route may work out i mean there are enough people who do brilliantly well and it works so if there's a click for them going to a certain college or a certain route it works but i think there's a there's a big group which is somewhere in the middle that is not exactly sure and they 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 face this pressure and then they have to take a decision somehow uh, and they get there and it's only later that they start you know having you know deeper realizations and then i think there's another group that is uh, that is probably hungry to learn by doing and i've seen that there are some of the smartest people but they they cannot sit in front of a textbook beyond a point of time they cannot sit and be you know restfully sit and you know attend a lecture beyond a point of time they need that to be complemented with a lot of action and doing and getting out there once that happens and i've seen some of our students who joined us when they had a year down in engineering uh, they were struggling but once they got into that action mode i've seen their grades improve like crazy so i find that once energy starts coming in into into our life then it comes up and it, it shows up in every aspect of our life i just wanted to know would you be sharing this recording with us yes we will uh, we will put this recording up on uh, on youtube and share the link and also in case you are interested in knowing more specifically about the undergraduate program i am also requesting my colleague rhythm right now to share a youtube link of a launch webinar that we had a uh, uh, couple of weeks back which is focused only on the ug program uh, so we'll share that link right now and this link uh, we'll share it with you maximum within 2 days by email and whatsapp would love to hear from a few more of my friends over here what is it that has connected with you today and uh, i think it's a great program i think it's a good initiative uh, i'm assuming you will be kind of supporting the students through some complimentary online learning like simple thing like project management and some business analysis courses are available <coughs> um uh, so i think it's a great idea uh, all the best in terms of you know making this success and i will connect it with you on linkedin and thank you so much thank you so much sushil and i look forward to connecting with you i think one more question um is this uh, go open to students only in pune or to people all over india so the the fellowship program has been open to everybody and they could do it remotely in fact we also have students in in two countries but uh, this program the ug program we want them to come to pune because the first year is going to be a period of rapid skilling up so we would like them to be in pune and we have uh, set up a concept of a smart campus which means we've tied up with five different spaces where they can work and operate from during the day uh, and we want them to use the city as their school so they will be out every day meeting people going to different businesses you know do, uh, taking research notes so therefore we want them to be in pune thank you so it is not really clear like they need to be in pune for the full of first year and beyond that how will it work so the first year they definitely need to be in pune the second year is apprenticeships so uh, we would like them to be ideally right now i am telling everybody second year also in pune but honestly uh, after the first apprenticeship is open i would be open to some people wanting to do apprenticeships in different places the first apprenticeship i would want them to do here so that we can kind of monitor them and work closely with them but by the time they are in the second year i would be open to having some of them do apprenticeships outside the third year is a long apprenticeship and that's when we are completely open if they find an opportunity that is really up their alley and not in pune we would be open to that so, so we are going with a small cohort of 30 students this year and i want to keep it uh, small so that we can really be case to case and make sure that 
you know, within the design constraints, we can cater to each one's needs. And that's what's really worked for us. And, and we feel that it's it's not difficult to make that happen. So we, we are keeping it small and we are keeping, we've designed it in a way that it can be open at the same time it, follow, it follows a certain system. So the entire idea would be more like a face-to-face -face, um, on hands experience rather than um, remote. Yes, absolutely. But the mix of that will change. So by the second year, the mix will change. And by the third year, the mix will change even a little bit more. Okay. In what sense? Like how much of remote or like how? On the first year, it will be almost like 90% face-to-face. Okay. Right? There okay. will be some sessions that we'll still do online because as the way the world is moving. The second year, they'll start going to their workplace. So that part is face-to-face. -face, and we'll start doing more and more check-ins with them online. And by the third year, they'll be really deeply entrenched in their workplace and their apprenticeships. There'll be some events that they'll come for. There'll be certain academic uh, portions that they'll come for. But other than that, a lot of check-ins, a lot of one-to-one -one coaching will start happening online. Uh, so even in the first year, would uh, like probably the child might have certain interests, but will they have exposure to different kind of, uh, 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 in the sense, different work options so that they can decide probably for example if they think engineering is the thing for them but they could be good at finance would they have that kind of an opportunity to so that's a great question and what will happen is see they'll be working on different types of projects in okay. the project there'll be an engineering component there'll be a money component there'll be a sales component there'll be a you know a, a service design experience design component so they'll get to try their hands on many pieces and as they go through the reflections they start showing interest in something then we can start putting more and more emphasis for them on certain mm -hmm. aspects of projects right yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll go and work in an engineering company but they'll start doing for example there was a student who showed this flare you know in their first year uh, and then he started making toys out of laser cut mdf right and then he learned autocad and then he learned 3d modeling and he went deeper and deeper into that space so in the first year we you know help them to explore uh, and go deeper if they like in their interests but not necessarily go and work in a company that's an engineering company that will happen in the second year but at least they'll have exposure to yes uh, yes yes Yes, uh, different components and then they know yes absolutely so like in the last in the launch webinar we had somebody who said that what if my child is interested in manga right uh, in cartoons and my response was very simple that in almost every project you do there's a communication element right and if you're interested in manga you start exploring how can i use that media uh, to communicate it could be in invitations it could be at a venue it could be you know you could do a project for a company for an engineering company like there's a one of our collaborators runs a, a, a crane safety systems company how about proposing to them that we'll create a safety manual for you which is in the form of a comic and uh, if you go to the ceo with that proposal i'm sure he's not going to say no right so you you start experimenting how are you going to use your interests and skills to bring value to somebody else? That's what the whole deal is about. It's not about me sitting on an island and just making comics. It's about me making comics and doing something with it. So that opportunity to explore is really what this program is all about. But will we teach manga? No. You will learn. We will help you to start applying that. And the truth is, if I'm interested in that, once you get a project and if suppose the CEO of the company says, make this manual for me, you will work day and night and figure out. You will learn. You will find a manga mentor for yourself in Japan. True. So giving that start actually is very important to these young minds actually. Exactly. Giving them a purpose. Once they feel purpose. that somebody is valuing what I'm doing, they will learn at a, at a crazy pace. And I think you know that as much as I do. I think we all are like that, but we were forced and we got into it and we found our own yeah. purpose. It's very challenging for these young kids with, with so many distractions yes. to find the purpose, actually. That's the challenge. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you said it. I mean, that, that, I think that's a great thought to kind of wrap this up with because at the end of the day, I think the real problem that we are all trying to solve for 
as educators is the problem of motivation is the problem of 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 motive of purpose and we all know that once we have that then nothing can stop us once we have that direction or purpose or something to solve nothing stops us and definitely lack of education or lack of knowledge does not stop us because we educate ourselves so the whole concept is to throw that challenge and purpose at them very fast i mean that's why we all love video games because there's a end there's a goal there's something to be conquered so uh, i understand that the skills in i mean the field does not matter you work on so it could be dance it could be theater it could be acting absolutely. it could not be everything industrial and all of this absolutely so it could be any field but they develop capacities which will enhance them in whichever field they are absolutely so the field itself so if i want to be a dancer the dance tuition is not going to be provided by a program because you will have that and you will keep doing that but everything that surrounds it and that helps you to wrap that and make create value for the world using dance is where this program can help you interface with the world and i think that's what the real value is so these are so beautiful questions thank you so much for putting these up and this is very difficult for us to communicate you know it's only because you are asking it it's kind of really getting clarified so really thank you so much uh, urmila is there anything that you'd like to share uh... Uh, i was actually very excited about the smart campus concepts i was hoping that you would share about that so uh, the, thanks urmila for pointing that out so the look we feel that uh i i did my pgd pm post grad program at iim ahmedabad and it's a beautiful campus in the heart of ahmedabad but the truth is in those two years we hardly ventured out it was like living on an island and i feel that that's really irrelevant today i mean the, i feel that we would want our students to be out there and explore there is so much of innovation there's so much of creativity uh, there is so much of uh, entrepreneurship there's such amazing things happening in the city so let's make the city our campus and you know if you're a dancer there is so many things that are happening you know and so what we have done is to catalyze that concept like i said we've tied up with five spaces one is an art space one is a maker space one is an electronics research and manufacturing facility one is uh, mcci which is a which is a industry space one is our own space right and we have a couple of other people who are offering their space but even these spaces our idea to the students is that you don't go and plonk yourself there you will have daily challenges you go out and you meet new you go to different places you go to different parts of the city depending on the project you're working on and you have these spaces if you need so if you need to go and have a meeting somewhere you have a space if you need to go and work on building something you have a space you know the heart of pune is a place called bori ali where you have all the electronics guys all the woodworking guys all the paint guys and today you know anybody who's constructing a, a new machine all they need to go is go to bori ali and find vendors right and that's what these youngsters need to do when we launched enterprise we you know our first project was we gave them this challenge and we took this challenge actually together that we are going to build a giant catapult that can catapult a watermelon from one side of mulla mutha river to the other and the challenge was to actually construct this catapult while we did not succeed in making a catapult that can throw a watermelon that far but we made we had two teams and they made a catapult that throws a nariyal across a football field and then we had a catapult fest and they learned a lot of engineering in that a lot of marketing a lot of sales a lot of event management uh a huge amount of learning came out of it and they made a balance sheet for the whole event so uh, we are at 612 uh about near the end of this time thank you so much for being here taking your time out this evening Uh, thank you so much for being an educator uh, and i look forward to connecting 
uh, one to one. I uh, we would love to invite every one of you to our uh, little space in Koringa Park, and we would love to visit your space. So I, I'm leaving this with an open invitation and uh, looking forward to connecting. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Ajit. Then it's, uh, it's been a pleasure. Obviously, different people that presented.